It's a big, noisy universe of stocks out there. Welcome to Goodbye or Goodbye. Our goal to help cut through that noise to navigate the best moves for your portfolio. More than 150 companies went public in 2023, giving the market a fresh slate of names in which to invest. We're taking a closer look at which companies are worth adding to your portfolio and which are better left behind. I'm here with John Keaton, Torch Capital founder and managing partner, and you actually invested in an older IPO, Sweet Green, from 2021. Your goodbye today is in a similar space. We're talking about Kava, the Mediterranean sort of fast casual chain. The stock's actually done pretty well since the IPO. And your first reason is you say it's a strong brand. Completely. Brand is critical and they sit in a really interesting spot of Mediterranean cuisine, which is healthy, delicious and fast. And as, I, as you mentioned, you know, we were early investors in Sweetgreen, mm -hmm. which has also proven mass adoption of healthier options, fast casual healthier options are growing like crazy. And, and the sort of knowledge of Kava, since it's become public, it's also opened a lot of new locations, has been pretty good. Absolutely. Both companies are growing like crazy. Um, but Kava has really established itself, you know, differentiated. There aren't that many players in this space. Mm -hmm. And Kava's performed well and is beloved by people. And let's talk about the financial performance as well and what you see as the growth pot potential for the company. So they've done it. The management team has done an excellent job. Uh, it's profitable, EBITDA positive. They've been growing. They grew 20% uh, in the last year. Uh, that looks like it's going to continue. And we think uh, we still think there's, there's huge tailwinds behind this. I mean, I think with the advent of healthier options, uh, we're seeing people want that. But more importantly, there's other tailwinds behind this. Like mm -hmm. we've been hearing all about the miracle drugs of GLP-1s to treat obesity, whether it's Ozempic or Wegovy. Well, that's growing like crazy as well. And they're, they're proving to be accelerators for behavioral change, which means even if people weren't as interested before, if they're on these medications, they will be more interested now. And we have a company, Ro, uh, which is a full stack telemedicine treatment. They treat obesity. And we're seeing the numbers are insane about how quickly they're growing. If a patient qualifies for obesity, they can even get the medication without leaving their home. And so that just shows, that's just a simple signal of how big this is going to be. So there's sort of consumer sentiment positive, but there's also real change in the market, and which will create more behavioral change. And then the third point, and this is something you alluded to, is the management team at Kava, which you say is a, is a strong one. Very strong team. Again, it shows how disciplined they were, uh, and they've continued to be with revenue growth and their, their margin increases. Uh, their COO came from Taco Bell, where she was a total star in, in excellence of operations. So it's a great asset to have in their team. The CEOs had a very clear vision for the brand and what they're doing. And so it's really, we feel it's all steam ahead on this company. So we'd like to talk about what are the potential risks to the upside, right? And in this case, it's perhaps just overall weakness in consumer spending. Kava is not seen as sort of a value offering, right? No, it's, it's not. The price point's a little bit higher. So is that why it, it would potentially be vulnerable? Exactly. So as any sort of higher cost good, considered sort of a luxury spend in the, in the casual, fast casual space, that could put it at risk. But that said, if that's more medium and short term, but long term with the tailwinds, with the strong management company, with the strong growth, uh, and, and the strong brand, we, we still feel very positive about this company. Okay, so that is your goodbye. Let's talk about the one that you would say investors maybe should avoid, and that's Birkenstock, another IPO from last year. That one has been a little bit rockier stock-wise than Kava. First reason you don't like it, high valuation. Totally. So I think it's a great company, but mm -hmm. it's trading at an enormous PDE ratio, uh, way above its peers, um, about 4x premium compared to the average 17 of uh, 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 17 PD ratio of, of the competitors in the space or other footwear brands. Um, on top of that, growth has uh, slowed. I mean, they, they grew pretty well last year. Mm -hmm. they, their Q4 sales exceeded expectations, but the margins, they were negative. So the stock got hit a week ago when that came out in the earnings mm -hmm. call. It's rebounding a bit today. But we think overall they're guiding only 8% growth, which is down. Um, and so they, they have some work to do. Yeah, well, let's talk a little bit more about that limited growth that you're talking about compared with the industry. So this is what analysts are projecting yep. will be uh, their annual growth, 8.3%, but the industry average projected at 11. What, what's, what, what gives there? What, why are we seeing that kind of a gap? I think they came out really strong uh, and they sort of saturated their existing market, which would will in a second take us to why I think, what could turn them around. But look, they haven't, they innovated a ton to get to where they are and they, they re, recalibrated the brand 
and that was shown in the IPO, uh, and that was valued in the IPO. But now they got to do something next, and I think existing uh, their existing performance is also very much at uh, the mercy of retail. Like 70% is wholesale uh, wholesalers. And wholesalers have their own pressures on margin, mm -hmm. and so they can't control their own destiny either. So that's also another potential pressure. And as we come up back to pessimistic consumer sentiment, even though yeah, inflation let's go to that. Yeah. is, uh, yeah, so there we go. Uh, even though inflation has come down, we think the consumer sentiment is, uh, consumer price index is still up 3%, and consumer sentiment is still not where it needs to be for, again, a luxury good. You know, I have to say, I usually don't weigh in on these, but one thing that you didn't include that I thought was intriguing that we've seen a lot with Birkenstock, and I say this as a Birkenstock owner, there are a lot of Birkenstock knockoffs out there as well, and some of them at cheaper price points. And so I wonder at what point that also totally sort of can cannibalize their own. You know, they created a category that became right. fashionable, but that also makes them potentially victim Vulnerable. to that cannibalization. Exactly. All right, let's talk about what could go right. And you did allude to this, which is innovation. Like, what's the next innovation in hippie sandals? <laughs> well, I think they have to think beyond that. Uh, they are they basically made sort of awkward, comfortable sandals, cool and popular. I think they should be able to do the same as sneakers. I mean, look, mm -hmm. uh, hookahs have become fashionable. Uh, you know, New Balance was like a dad shoe, and it rose like a phoenix from the ashes, yeah. becoming cool for kids all over the country. So they've already done that in another category. They should be able to cross over in that category. But either way, if they add more creativity and add more innovation, which help re, you know, re, restart the brand in general, if they can do that in another category, I would feel very differently about this. OK, well, we'll watch that to see if it happens. But in the meantime, let's sum up what you're telling investors. And we should say, by the way, you don't have a position in either of these stocks. I have no correct? positions in either of these All companies. Right, it's just what you have observed. So you're telling investors, buy Kava based on its strong brand, strong financial performance, and experienced management team. On the other side, avoid Birkenstock, high valuation, limited growth potential, and the mixed picture on consumer spending, unless we get Maybe a Birkenstock dad sneaker. Watch this space. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. We'll be looking for it. All right. That'll do it for goodbye or goodbye. Well, we bring you new episodes three times a week at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Thanks, John. Thanks, Julie.